240 billion euros. This is the total value of the aggressor country's public and private assets blocked by Europe after the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. We have 37 billion euros of private funds in Europe and we also have 208 billion of state assets. We will continue to work on the issue on financing reparations because it is important that Russia pays for the damage. And we are working on that in all of our discussions that we are having about Russian assets, both private or state. Didier Reinders, European Commissioner for Justice. Brussels is working on a mechanism that would allow frozen Russian funds to be used to help Ukraine. However, Moscow's partners are demanding that the EU abandon plans to confiscate Russian state assets. The Kremlin could ask China, Saudi Arabia and Indonesia to lobby for its interest. A senior diplomat from a non-EU state set on condition of anonymity. These countries are very skeptical about the idea. The concern is this would create a precedent. In other words, these countries would fear they could be next to lose out. As much as fearing a precedent, they could be acting on Putin's behalf and not wanting the EU to help Ukraine on the battlefield. From Politico citing an anonymous source. Ukraine considers full confiscation of Russian assets a broad fare. The country needs stability and predictability. Regardless of political fluctuations in the world, Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmahal has said, Europe is not yet ready for a full seizure of Russian funds, but is seriously talking about handing over to Ukraine the interests generated by Russian assets in Western banks and depositories. Over the past two years of Russian full-scale aggression against Ukraine, these revenues have totaled about 4 billion euros. Kyiv could receive the first tranche between 2 and 3 billion as early as July 2024. I propose to provide 90% of these revenues from frozen Russian assets to increase military aid to Ukraine. We will do this through the European Peace Facility, which is an intergovernmental fund, and there will be another 10% left. It will go into the EU budget to be used for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Josep Borrell, High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. Ukraine wants to use the frozen Russian money both for military needs and as reparations. For the second one, it is necessary to create a special compensation mechanism. On April 2, 2024, the International Register of Damaged Cost to Ukraine by Russian Aggression was launched. It is already collecting and systemizing information on the damage. The next step is to set up a compensation commission. The Russian state does not recognize the fact that it has to pay reparations. Secondly, Russia is a permanent member of the Security Council, and it is also not possible to create a compensation mechanism within the UN, because it will block. So there are discussions that a likely source of funding could be these frozen Russian assets, which could be confiscated and later transferred to Ukraine. The United States of America is also looking for a way to make Russia pay for its aggression. A bill that would allow the confiscation of 5 to $8 billion of Russian assets has been approved by committees of the U.S. House of Representatives and Senate. Congress will soon pass the document to President Joe Biden for consideration. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Valeria Nekopelova, UATV News.